welcome to Inside the Paint. It's an inside look into all of the action of the British Basketball League. I'm Jeanette Kwachi and I'm joined by Leicester Riders coach Rob Paternostro and Surrey Scorchers Josh Steele. Welcome to both of you. This Friday night was filled with basketball. On Sky Sports, the London Lions travelled up north to take on the Caledonia Gladiators. Let's take a look at what happened. The Gladiators giving their fans a late Christmas gift straight out the gate, starting strong in the first period. Gladiators taking an eight-point lead into the second. Lions trying to stay patient, but defensively having a hard time. But a small swing of momentum, and London actually defending, shaking off the slow start to really step back into contention and take the first half by a point. And it was that point separating both teams at the break and that momentum that the Lions extended the half with was fully locked in for the third. 10-point lead, impressive plays. Defensively, London frustrating the Gladiators at home. And a Caledonian switch-up wasn't even enough to stop the Lions from roaring. And I mean, London doing what London do best, Coach Rob. We saw something really special from them today. Yeah, no doubt about it. We were really concerned for them with the travel from Paris all the way up there, missing the players. But that's a heck of a win. Yeah. You can see that on their bench, how excited they were to come out of there with a W. Yeah, and Josh, they're missing so many players. Their injury list is getting a bit long and uncomfortably long, I'm pretty yeah, sure for no, them, but they no, still no had one, it. No one would like to see that, no, yeah. especially not the coach. Go ahead and into a game, you want to go in full strength, so you don't like to see that. But I'd like to say I called it. At the beginning of the game, I said they've got the experience and the chemistry to, uh, you know, to get, the, get the job done tonight. It's been brilliant. And it has been a busy week here at the British Basketball League with two other games having tipped off already. Starting with the Leicester Riders taking on the Bristol Flyers on Thursday night. Dan Routledge and Dan Clark called that one. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Yes, this was a very Bristol game here in Leicester. The Bristol Flyers beating the Leicester Riders 87 to 81. And Dan... Bristol weren't at their best in the first half, but they hung on to Leicester. They made sure the riders didn't get away. And then in the second half, they accelerated to their best. Yeah, as you said, it was a very, very Bristol performance. Something that I think, you know, they pride their, <laughs> themselves on over the last few years. And especially this year, you know, obviously coming through a rough patch of, of form at the moment. But they stuck with it in the first half. And in the second half, you know, they found their way, you know, with a couple of explosive performances in the, in the third quarter from Jacob and in the fall from Johnson, you know, that, you know really helped them get to that point in, in the game where they were able to seal the victory. Well, yeah, Jacob and Johnson doing the damage in the second half. One guy who did all sorts of damage to the Leicester Riders throughout the game, Brad Green, setting a new Bristol Flyers club record with 14 offensive rebounds. He had a monster performance, 19 points, 17 rebounds and five assists. Yeah, absolutely amazing performance from Brad Green tonight. Great shift he's put in for his team, you know, Offensive, offensive rebound is not an easy skill, you know, and not many people were able to dominate it in the way he did tonight. So it was an extremely impressive performance. And it was, for me, the difference maker, you know, between the two teams tonight, you know, 14 offensive rebounds is not something you hear about every day in the basketball world. Well, even in the uh, final play, the dagger play, if you like, Rob Paternostro caught a timeout and said, we need to get the defensive rebound. They didn't. Brad Green got it, and that was the key. And if you look at the numbers, it kind of masks the total uh, rebounds, but they caught the, so many offensive uh, rebounds, and that allowed them to get 16 second-chance points. And the Flyers, who couldn't buy a three-pointer in the first half, they were 0 for 9, I think it was, 5 for 9 in the second half. Yeah, and the, I mean, the other key stat there was in the first half, they had nine turnovers, which is un, you know uncharacteristic for them, but only two in the second half. And I I think that really, again, contributed to the fact that they were able to make shots. They were able to you know, get their hands on a lot of offensive rebounds and finish around the ring. And you know, that really limits the amount of mistakes you can make. And you know, they did a great job of limiting those mistakes in the second half. And from a Leicester point of view, they'll obviously be disappointed having given up all those offensive rebounds. But some excellent performances off the bench for them that really set them up and put them in a good position at halftime. They just couldn't see it through. Yeah, I mean, we talked a lot about it during the game. You know, the, the importance, that, you know, and the production they were getting off their bench from their bench players, you know, TJ Law, Connor Washington, you know, the young guys coming through, Blake Bowman, was, you know, he made a tough shot in the beginning of the second quarter to really get them going. And, you know, they did the same at the, in, you know, the beginning of the fourth quarter as well. And I thought they did a really good job. It's just that I think the starters today really let the Leicester Riders down. And it's disappointing to see that because they've got some really, really good players up there in Leicester. But, you know, they need to produce night in, night out. But a good day here for Bristol. Back to you, Jeanette.
Uh, my two favourite Dan's. I'm, can I give you a hug? I'm sorry. Like, how was that? Oh, sorry to make you relive that. But no, honestly, like, how, how was that for you? I mean, Brad Green put on a performance, didn't he? Yeah, uh, disappointing for us. Very disappointed. Uh, you know, I thought going in at halftime, we should have been up more. And I yeah. think that's where we really let us let ourselves down. Uh, but give Bristol credit because I thought uh, Kenny Johnson being back for them was huge. And he came up with some huge play. Jacob, huge play. But obviously, Green just couldn't keep him off the offensive glass. So disappointing night for us. But, um, you know, give Bristol a lot of credit for the way they play. Okay, as always, ever gracious, uh, Coach Rob. Now, the other game that tipped off this Friday saw the Cheshire Phoenix host the Manchester Giants. Josh Bett and Graham Hiscock had that one. Thank you very much, Janana. Of course, what an exciting game it was here at the Cheshire Oaks Arena. Manchester Giants coming here, not having beaten them almost two years ago till tomorrow is that day, but great performance of the Giants in the second half, Graham. Yeah, they came with a real point to prove, Manchester Giants. It's a way they've got to play in every game going forward now. And they just had some superb performances by the whole team. Everyone who stepped on the floor did a job. But William Lee, Evan Walsh really stand out for me. Well, let's go back to those two players. William Lee, I mean, it was an MVP performance. No doubt, of course, he was player of the game. Yeah, we made the comparisons. He is the British basketball league, Kevin Durant. He is so impossible to defend when he's off the dribble like this, Graham. Yeah, and goes either way, showing he can go left or, or right with the floater, gets in the passing lane, can knock down the three, can excite the crowd with dunks. Uh, he, 35 minutes, heavy minutes for him, so he's got to feel really good about his body and his physical well-being and mental well-being. Well, just so tough to defend, I mean, going in with floaters, every shot this guy <laughs> takes looks like Kevin Durant. The form is the same, the dribbling is the same, everything, but, you know, we got to give a big mention to Evan Walsh. I'm starting to call him Evan Nobly because every time he gets to the bucket, it's a Euro step, he finds a way. Yeah, either hand, either foot, slow speed, quick speed. It's, it's not a problem for him, and he also flexes his muscles as well. Just 21 minutes of action for 20 points and one rebound, one assist, and just the one turnover. A couple of games recently, a lot of heavy turnovers, not today. Now, something happened tonight that hasn't happened for almost a year now. Three losses in a row for the Cheshire Phoenix. Where do they go from here, Graham? Well, Coach Ben Thomas and the players have got to look at themselves in the mirror and just look where things are not going right. Still some great performance from Ridu, Maceo, Jack, Aaron Ray and Schwagar, four of their big five, all going large tonight offensively, but they just didn't quite have it. Manchester Giants, too tough. Well, again, back to you, Jeanette, all here at the Cheshire Oaks Arena. Josh Graham, thank you very much. Now, remember, we have two games coming your way this Saturday, starting with Rob's Leicester Riders hosting the Sheffield Sharks. This is the second time these teams will meet this season. And, Rob, it was a narrow loss the last time you were both out. How are you approaching this one? Yeah, we got to bounce back from the loss the other night. Obviously, hectic uh, Christmas schedule for us, uh, for a lot of teams, actually. But um, good thing is we're home. Yeah. Sheffield's a real difficult team to play. They don't hurt themselves. They take care of the ball really well. So we're going to have to be really solid on offense, but also make sure we lock in on defense because they have some weapons out there we have to stop. Absolutely. And with your non-biased analyst head on and Rob not being in the room, Josh, how do you call this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the game would be well coached either way. Um, yeah, I like I like Sheffield for this one, honestly. I think Sheffield's a team that's really good at getting you out of your rhythm. They play very slow and quite unlike other teams in this league. So for a team that's kind of, you know, still trying to find their rhythm with the new adjustments and stuff, I think that's going to be the hill they need to overcome. I mean, I wasn't expecting that answer, but there you go. <laughs> all good. It's all, all good. good. It's all love. I mean, the second game on Saturday, we'll see the Newcastle Eagles travel down to the Pavilion to take on the Plymouth City Patriots. We're, we, sorry, we are calling this one the Drew Lasker Derby. He's played for both Drew Plymouth had a big win at home last week over Caledonia. What will the Eagles need to do to avoid the same fate? Well, they'll need to shake off the road trip. It's always traditionally been a banana pill game for the Newcastle Eagles. It's 400 miles, and so it's tricky. You know, those fans down there are some of the best in the, in the league. But the advantage the Newcastle Eagles have is Plymouth had to make the trip twice. They went up on Thursday, went back, and so that's 800 miles on their legs. And so this is going to be a great win. And I think, Jeanette, no matter what happens, I win. Oh, thank you very much, Drew. And we have one game on Sunday for you to watch before the New Year's Eve celebrations begin as the Sheffield Sharks will host the Manchester Giants to close out 2023. We're joined by our commentary team, Ant Rowe and Todd Harris. Now, Ant, this is Sheffield's second game in two days. How much of an impact is this going to have on the Sharks' performance, do you think? 
Well, this is a proper doubleheader as well, Jeanette. This is less than 24 hours. Because of the Sunday is a 3 p.m. tip-off, mm -hmm. it's going to be a really quick turnaround for the Sheffield Sharks. And I think it all depends on how things go the day before against the Leicester Riders as well. And they're going to be playing a high-confidence Manchester Giants after that surprise yeah. victory against Cheshire Phoenix. So there's a lot of dynamics going on here. Jalen Pipkins and that squad, they come in looking so good at 10-9, and 9, but they lean on him heavily. Uh, that's a lot of miles on those legs, knowing what's ahead of them and what they've already played. Well, what Sheffield Sharks do do a really good job. They don't beat themselves, and and they play really good defense in terms of you know they're one of the best in the league at points uh, points allowed. So they'll make things really difficult for the Giants. And you have to question as well: Will Jamel Anderson return for the Giants? He was absent today. It didn't uh, affect them yeah. whatsoever. William Lee, a monster, has 27 points. So you've got a player there as well, a sleeping giant who's coming back from injury. Does he carry on that confidence? Speaking about confidence, Evan Walsh. Yeah. He has been unbelievable. He scores a 22 points career high in the British Basketball League then he does it three times another 20 point game for him here as well so they've got weapons in and around but can the Sheffield Sharks neutralize those weapons as a team collectively the Sheffield Sharks have been very solid defensively the Giants looking very good coming off that big win as you pointed out against Cheshire 92 points and the dynamic duel of Walsh and Lee will certainly be someone that Sheffield will keep their eye on back to you Jeanette Good, and Ant, thank you as always. And we are starting 2024 off on the right foot with a Monday game. The London Lions will travel to take on Josh's Surrey Scorchers. And Josh, the Lions have had a really busy schedule. You're going to take advantage of that, do you think? Absolutely, that's the plan. You know, we, uh, just like Caledonia, had the opportunity tonight. Uh, we see a great opportunity for us on Monday night, uh, Monday afternoon even. And, you know, we get to do it in front of a sellout crowd. And um, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure the record for Surrey on New Year's Day is something like 13 and 3. So oh. odds are in our favour, to be honest. I, well, I'm going to ask now, Coach Rob, how he's calling <laughs> this one. I'm going London all the way. <laughs> uh, no doubter. Um, no, actually, it should be a tough game. No one wants to play that uh, game on New Year's Day. Um, so let's see what London having to take. But what we saw tonight from them mm. is a team that no matter what the odds are against them and what the schedule is, that they can come together and get a big win. So I'll go for London on the day. Uh, well, there you go. Got his own back. We love the unpredictability <laughs> of the league. Let's take a look at some of these fixtures coming up and some of the results that have already gone this week. Thursday, we saw the Newcastle Eagles take on the Plymouth City Patriots, 95 to 82. And it was the Leicester Riders, 81 to 87 against the Bristol Flyers. Cheshire Phoenix, 88, losing to the Manchester Giants. They scored 92. And then the Caledonia Gladiators and the London Lions. The Gladiators are losing at home to the Lions, 79-87. So let's take a look at Saturday. Leicester Riders take on the Sheffield Sharks. And then the Plymouth City Patriots take on the Newcastle Eagles, 5 and 8 o'clock respectively. Then on Sunday, the Sheffield Sharks back in action again, back to back against the Manchester Giants at 3 o'clock on Sunday. And then on New Year's Day, Surrey Scorchers, 3 o'clock against the London Lions. All of those, of course, available on our YouTube channel. But you can now forget about the league table and championship fixtures completely for the whole of January as we have this coming up. The British Basketball League trophy is back. The stakes are higher. The action is bigger. Here's how it all goes down. All 10 league teams are split into two groups of five. The trophy games are played across three weekends in January, where each team plays four games within their group, two at home and two away. The top two teams from each group will go into the semi-finals. It all comes down to an epic final four weekend at the Utilita Arena in Birmingham on the 27th and 28th of January 2024, with back-to-back semi-finals played on the Saturday followed by a double header with the men's and women's finals played on the Sunday. It's time to find the 2024 Trophy Champions. So here we go, we are in our trophy bag. Josh, how excited are you about this? Yeah, very excited. Um, this Everyone's 0-0 zero, zero again now. Yeah. Everyone's got the same record. And like we've said before, in a league where everybody could be anybody, you know, I'm excited for the opportunity to go at some silverware. Yeah, I feel that's going to be super competitive. And do you approach then this a bit differently than to how you approach the league then, coach? Not so much. No, I think it's uh, you're just trying to win the ball game, but it is an exciting part of the season. And I think anyone that's been down at that arena in Birmingham for those final games, 
This year we'll have two days of it. That's yes. what's so exciting is that Saturday will be a doubleheader. So exciting times in the British Basketball League. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. It should be an incredible weekend. And now as we approach the end of the month, thoughts will be turning to our December player and coach of the month. Look out on the socials for that short list and we'll drop that on Tuesday. But that's all from us this week. Drop us a comment below letting us know if you're cheering and who you're cheering for. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the unbeatable action. And have a happy new year. Yeah.